Nebraska Extension Crop Diagnostic Clinic held at the Eastern Nebraska Research and Extension Center during July centered on soil health and crop production. One focus area for that topic was the use of cover crops in no-till systems. Aaron Hurd works with the Natural Resources Conservation Service as this state's soil health specialist and has worked with producers using cover crops since 2010. He talked with us at the event about how the combination of cover crops and no-till could benefit the soil. I've worked with cover crops since 2010 with many producers, um, growing them and learning with them and you know, learned about the intricacies of cover crops and, and the management issues that come with them. So when we talk about no-till and cover crops, tell me why no-till maybe always isn't the only thing that you can do for your soil. So a lot of our soil is, uh, has residual structure problems related to tillage in the past. And so that tillage history in, in our fields causes us trouble when we convert to no-till. There's tillage layers in the soil, which are restrictive layers. And restrictive layers prevent water movement, uh, nutrient cycling, and root growth. And so in a no-till, long-term no-till field, we're totally dependent upon frost freeze events, wetting and drying, and, and a limited amount of root activity in the soil to solve that structure problem and allow water movement and air movement and with cover crops, we can certainly address that. Can you describe more what might happen to a root in a situation like that? Absolutely, when a, our cash crop roots have a very low rooting, toler, rooting pressure tolerance. And when they hit a restrictive layer, they'll turn and grow horizontally in the soil and thereby not be able to access further root mo or soil moisture in the soil further down and nutrients that w are placed further down. And so they're growing horizontally, wasting their energy, wasting time. And, and costing yield. So what's the answer to that? Cover crops um, really have a, high, a lot higher rooting pressure tolerance and so they can drive holes through those those restrictive layers thereby paving the road for cash crop roots to follow the next year. Does it matter what kind of cover crop you're using? Um, different cover crops have different rooting pressure tolerances and so there are certainly brassicas in the mix would help with that. Um, deep tap-rooted plants like uh, canola and sunflowers are certainly something that I would advise for, for that. So earlier this year we talked with Craig Derrickson about ephemeral gullies and some of the washing that happened and what producers would need to do and how they'd need to manage it and one of the options was cover crops. Why are cover crops a good, maybe a good option in those situations? Well cover crops after we've fixed the problem, the, the issue on the soil surface, with a little bit of a tillage event to, to fix the ephemeral goalie, it's not settled. The soil's there loose, um, it's not gonna hold, and so the very next rain event, it will, it will potentially wash right back to the bottom of that tillage event. And so a cover crop is a very valuable tool in that situation to heal the soil in, to really uh, put roots in, in the soil and, and build structure immediately, and as well as armor the soil surface. So the next time there's over surface water flowing over it, it will, protect that soil surface. What's the hesitation to doing that? Uh, just an easier way is just to till it back in? To till it back in and, and let the corn residue come back over it maybe, um, but that soil is still unconsolidated and, and loose and so it's a real risk. What are some of the other areas that NRCS might be able to help farmers with conservation practices? Um, definitely other conservation practices for those ephemeral goalies are uh, grass waterways or terraces, sediment basins things like that, if, if it's too steep, too, too much volume going through that for, for a cover crop to hold. Areas outside of the ephemeral gullies where you think producers might be able to take advantage of some of the NRCS uh, activities? Absolutely, so in, in an agronomy, uh, agronomic system like this, cover crops really address many of our issues that we see in, in, a, in a crop field. Uh, we don't really have an erosion problem, we have a water infiltration problem. So I think that's our number one issue and then um, getting bi biological diversity in the system is critical to, to uh, cycling nutrients and, and helping those crops yield better. Why do you think there's a water infiltration problem? Um, back to the restrictive layer. Um, most of our fields have that historic tillage layer that's never been addressed. And so we'll see a long, a 25 year no-till field or a long-term no-till field that still has those restrictive layers in it and it only has a half an inch per hour infiltration rate with cover crops for five years, we can change that infiltrate substantially. And I've seen fields with nine and 14 inch infiltration rates per hour um, 
that can receive a heavy rain event and, and soak all that water into the soil profile. How does a farmer find that? Do they need to dig up the soil and find those roots that are shooting sideways? Absolutely. I challenge farmers to to really take a shovel to their field to, to investigate their soil with a, a small pit and see if the soil horizontally fractures. That's an unnatural fracture, especially if it's on a paper's edge and that identifies where the problem is and then the cover crop roots can really address that. The work of cover crops for, for Nebraska is that eight inches in the soil.